Hey everyone, thanks again for coming back to another episode of Built By. Um, this week we are featuring Mike DeMora, who is the owner at KMB Remodeler. Um, additionally, he is um, a, a, the business development at OneClick, Mike, is that correct? Uh, I would say, yeah, okay, that's that. I, I can take that title, I guess. Okay, yeah, perfect. Um, so yeah, business development, some title around there at uh, One Click Contractor. Um, thanks so much for uh, taking the time out of your day to speak with me today, Mike. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So um want to dive in, you, obviously, with your experience, um, you're on both sides of the spectrum when it comes to um, home improvement. You own a business and you own a product that helps that business. So I'd love to hear um, how you got into the industry, a little bit about your background there. <laughs> uh, I got into the industry like everybody else gets into this industry for the most part, is I needed a job, right? <laughs> this is a business that, uh, you know, look, it doesn't require college rings. Um, if you come in either from the installation side, which many people do. Uh, he worked as an installer or a sub uh, and then had that, you know, notion of, hey, I, you know, I could, I could do this myself, right? Or you, like myself, you worked in on the sales and marketing side and said, hey, I can do this myself. Um, so I don't know anybody who grew up saying, you know, when I grow up, you know, what I really want to do is sell siding. You know, I haven't, I haven't met that person. Right. Uh, it's really interesting. Um, and I know we were talking earlier, you mentioned that the industry itself is really far behind on technology, typically. Um, when you first came in, um, was that something you immediately were like, we're going to lead the charge here? Or what were, what were your thoughts around that? Well, no, I mean, it, it's it's basically uh, it evolved. And, um, you know, what do they say is, you know, necessity is the you know, the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, sales and the home Im Im improvement industry, along with distribution, um, you know, it, it comes from a very uh, set culture. Uh, and that culture was um, basically circled around a sales culture, right? Um, the door-to-door -door salesman, the traveling salesman, you know, the techniques that are often taught in this industry um, are the techniques that were used by, you know, Bible salesmen, you know, and uh, full of brush salesmen back in the 20s and 30s because, you know, they needed to learn how to uh, get somebody involved in a product and close them that day because they were moving on to the next town. And, you know, some people uh, who will remain nameless for now develop these into selling systems and they've been teaching the same stuff. For 50 years, you know, they a 10 step system and they teach uh, a very regimented way of going into a home and presenting a product and closing the deal, selling it. Right. And to me, uh, and, and believe me, and I was a devotee of that for years and years until, uh, you know, call it what you will, uh, conviction, maybe I just felt like, you know what? There's got to be a better way because what I'm doing is not necessarily, I don't think it's 100% on the up and up. And I, nobody wants to get sold, right? Nobody wants that feeling. Um, so if the product is good and you, you, know, you can deliver it in a way that people uh, can be involved and immersed in the experience and kind of make it fun, right? Spending money should be a fun thing, right? It shouldn't be like... Oh my gosh, we're bringing a salesman into our home tonight. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of what evolved around to, to, you know, how do we streamline this process? How do we make it very transparent and yet keep people engaged at the same time? Yeah, and it's. I think you mentioned earlier there was a um, there was a stat that you found. I think GAF put out that was forty three percent of homeowners would buy a roof online. I think it was like forty six. Forty six. Um, 46 or 53. I mean, like, look, the bottom line, it was um, that survey was conducted based on uh, for, on people who had purchased the roof in, in a calendar year. Uh, the question was, if you could have bought this roof online, would you? And half of them said, yeah, they would without even knowing what that process looked like. So with that, you know, to me, it spoke volumes in the sense that 
what that survey really said is we don't want you in our house. Right. The old uh, Jehovah's Witness style of sales, knocking on the doors. Um, yeah, it's the, the technology really has uh, impacted that for sure. Um, so IDing that, obviously, how, how did you go? How did you plan to evolve your business? What was your game plan there? I'd love to hear some insights. On... Um, well, you know, I, I always kind of, you know, I'm a tinkerer, you know, so I, I, I like technology. I like, you know, gadgets. Uh, I guess that's the musician in me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're a musician, you, you, you know, you kind of learn how to tinker around with gear and you're always playing with this device and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had, um, I had been into computers at a very early time, uh, cause it just fascinated me. So I've been on the internet before there was an internet. We used to call them BBSs. Uh, they were electronic bulletin boards. Uh, I'm talking like back in the eighties. And, um, I, I, you know, I had my first 300 baud modem in, in the eighties, you know, and then we had a 1200 and then we had a, a 24 and then a 96 and so on and so forth. So, uh, and I'm not, I'm not a tech guy. Like I don't know how to build any of this stuff or engineer any of it. Uh, um, I guess the term would be power user, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, so I always saw this as, you know, as a tool that could be used. And the whole online experience to me was something like, well, there's got to be a way we could monetize this. And of course, you know, tons of people figured it out. So my thinking was, because um, I hate to drive, right? I don't want to drive. <laughs> Who wants to drive all over creation and you know go go over people's houses? So, I was like, well, why can't I use this technology to engage people in um, in the remodeling business and into what I do? And that's really what how it came about. Amazing. So, were you using like a tool like Zoom at the beginning? Um, how how did your sales process actually get these tools in and, and kind of just go from? Uh, whether a Zoom tool and and it became it evolved into this massive tool now, which is one click contractor. And um, I, I'd love to hear how that came about from the beginnings of that. Uh, uh, a lot of cursing and a lot. <laughs> what well, literally what it was was a Frankenstein monster, right? Mm -hmm. So the the uh, genesis of this was using. Uh, screen shares, you know, like you mentioned Zoom because everyone knows that we were actually using something way cruder back then. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it was it was it was like spinning plates. We had about mm, between seven and nine different softwares that that we would use to pull off an online presentation. Um, so the the plus side of that to me was the consumer reaction was just they loved it. You know, they were wowed and like, you know, this was great for them. Uh, but behind the curtain, the people watching me do this, it was like, you know, don't, don't see sausages made. They were like, you know, they were like, this is crazy because you're, you're literally juggling all these pieces of software. Um, how could you possibly teach the average contractor to do this where the average contractor generally has to get his, you know, his wife or his daughter to send an email for him, right? And I, and I say that, listen, they're my own kind, and I know them, right? Um, they're just not a tech-savvy uh, group for the most part. Some are. I mean, they're, 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 they're getting there. So, you know, on the plus side, we had the consumer loved it, right? Uh, on the downside, it was, it was way too clunky and way too cumbersome for me to package. And I just got lucky, you know? Um not to get into any kind of esoteric conversation, I believe an idea is, you know, no one really comes up with an idea. An idea is born out of wherever, right? And it looks for a host, right? Mm -hmm. And it needs somebody to say, hey, I need you to, you know, I need you to give birth to this idea. And it finds, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, a capable host. Mm -hmm. And it, maybe it's it finds multiple hosts, right? So I was just lucky to be like the idea chose me and said, hey, look, we, this is what we want to accomplish. You know, we think you're crazy enough to do it. And that's kind of how it came about. And I just got lucky by meeting uh, the right people 
uh, guys like Dale Thornberry, uh, who's just a brilliant in his own right and who's done great things for other technology companies in the home improvement space. And um, I pitched this idea to a lot of people and I just happened to pitch it to him. And he said, yeah, I, I think you're on to something. You need a development team. And that's I have a development team. Perfect. Yeah. It's funny how things like that work out. Um, the uh, So what we're seeing is a lot of, uh, I think we've mentioned in a previous podcast, but in our platform, um, zero virtual appointments were being set in the beginning of March. By the end of March, 500 plus virtual appointments a week. And that type of shift doesn't come without headaches for these businesses. So being on the home improvement side yourself with your own remodeling business, mm -hmm. how what advice would you give owners and sales managers um, in terms of when you're giving these appointments, what, what should reps know and how should reps effectively leverage a virtual appointment in your opinion? Well, um, it's a lot, it, to me, it's always been easy. Um, we used to, I mean, look, we've been selling online for, for years now. Mm -hmm. um, back when we first started doing it, we would offer it as a, a choice. Um, the initial consultation where would, where, you know, you could call it discovery, you can call it whatever you like, uh, needs analysis where you'd meet with somebody, you know, get, you know, acquire your measurements. You know, we all, we use third party measurements. Um, we would give them the choice to either we can come back here and, you know, show you what we've come up with, or we can do this as an online meeting back four years ago. Over 80% of the people wanted to so do it online. Really? Um, oh, yeah. So, well, and then we just stopped even asking and just said, uh, we're going to say we're going to send you a link to an online meeting. And, and they were like, oh, OK. And, and every time I explain this to people, it, it, it becomes like the zip code thing. Like I've had guys in different parts of the country saying, well, my customers want to see, feel, and touch, and they want to see me. And my response is, no, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. You're not that good looking, right? For a start, right? And they don't want to see what, what do consumers want. Mm -hmm. They want to know, first and foremost, that you're a legitimate company. Right. And where they're going to get that data from, this is this thing called the internet. Maybe you heard of it, right? They're going to, they're going to Google you, and they're going to – vet you for the most part, be it through Angie's List or various other sources or, you know, from a friend, a referral and say, yeah, these guys are legit based on reviews and based on what's out there in the BBB, right? Mm -hmm. So the second thing they want is your advice. They want your expertise for the most part. Not everybody. Some people, you know, think they know exactly what they want. And it all depends, like if you're a builder and you have plans, you know, but they want your expertise to say, like, say you're a kitchen guy, you know, you know, how should I lay out my kitchen? What should go where? What, what, what's functionality? Um, so they, they, they definitely want to have somebody who knows what you're talking about and they want your uh, expertise. The third thing they want after that is they want a price, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now, Wrap that all around with they also want to be treated with respect. I don't know any other thing that they want from us. <laughs> right. So but we were taught, no, we need to go in and we need to, you know, page one in the pitch book and page two and, you know, ask all these tie down questions and all this nonsense that guys are out there still teaching. And hey, look, whatever blows your hair back, that's good. But uh, I can only tell you from my experience, homeowners just want you know, they want the facts and mm -hmm. they want transparency, especially millennials. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. These people crave transparency. Like, you know, I jokingly said, you know, they don't, they don't want to buy vinyl. Uh, they don't want to buy vinyl signing, but they go buy vinyl records. Right? <laughs> right. You know, they have this thing about authenticity. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I mean, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, interesting. Um, the, uh, the, you know, I think we were talking, um, you know, you're seeing the KMB is getting what it was like an interesting uh, sales order. You've seen a big increase in um, was it Porticos, I think, recently. 
Yeah, I thought that was really interesting that um, we had such a huge uptick in a, in a such a, a luxury, non-essential item mm-hmm. when, uh, when um, you know, in the midst of, you know, a global pandemic. Yeah. I, I guess just people are just stuck at home and they're looking around and they, you know, those who have the means mm-hmm. uh, and now they have time on their hands and they're saying, you know, I always wanted one of these things or. Uh, maybe they're just tired of looking at each other. I, I really don't know. Right, there you go. Uh, yeah, so I mean, you know, segueing into COVID-19 and the pandemic and, and how it's affected the industry, and, and it sounds like um, k and as, you know, as using one click and, and really mastering virtual appointments, um, you've really been able to keep business churning. Um, obviously, there has to be a correlation between virtual appointments and um, and stay at home orders and things like that. So I, I'd love to hear how, um, from the beginning of COVID, did you change your processes at all, or did you kind of keep as business as usual on the virtual appointment side? Um, we changed one thing. And the one thing we changed is the guy who goes out and does the collection, you know, who does the capture, uh, now, now um, you know, he looks like he's ready to knock over 7-Eleven. He's wearing a mask and gloves. Right? <laughs> Other than that, we, you know, we haven't changed uh, any of our process because that's how we do it. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not doing as many, um, like for roofing, we always like to do an attic inspection to go into a house. Uh, we kind of leave that up to each individual uh, homeowner, uh, what their comfort level is, you know, if they have young children and whatnot. Um, so other than that, uh, our process is, it hasn't changed. Very cool. Um, yeah, so if you had any tips for a home improvement company, I, I know you've mentioned this and we may have talked about it earlier, but, but, um, it is such a, a, a big shift in these companies that don't have, I mean, uh, 40% of companies don't use a CRM, um, somewhere around that number. I'm probably pulling that out of thin air, but, um, you know, making this shift. Of what, what was that? Sorry. I said, I think it's higher. Higher. Yeah. Um, making this shift and what's one piece of advice you would give an owner, the reason why you need to invest in, in something, whether it be one click or whether it be some sort of virtual appointment software and train your team on. Um, well, look, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, you need to embrace digital transformation. You need to get on board with what, everywhere else corporate America has done, and that is embrace a digital transformation in your business. If you're doing things on pen and paper, if you're doing things that way, you know, it would be like if we were all, all uh, riding horseback, right? Mm-hmm. And that was our mode of, commu- of of transportation. And all of a sudden, Henry Ford just wheels the first Model T off the line, and we just say, ain't ever going to replace, you know... <laughs> One horsepower, yeah. <laughs> right, it's never going to happen. Um, it's it's tantamount from being the CEO of Blockbuster and saying, we don't have anything to worry about with Netflix. And besides, we got popcorn. Like They can come into our store and grab that DVD. And, and by the way, there, there is a Blockbuster that, you know, there's always outliers. There is a Blockbuster still left. It's flourishing. It's in Alaska. In Alaska. I think yeah. it. I think it. They have a really popular Twitter account too. It's like the last yeah. blockbuster. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, yeah. So you can be if you if that's your goal, mm-hmm. fine. Um, but you know, as technology comes around, like history has taught us that you know these innovations that come are game changing, and you need to embrace it and not buck it, uh, because if you do. You're going to wind up, you know, they're going to be studying you in a museum someday. And, you know, don't be that person. Uh, when, 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 when the pandemic first hit and the government was offering, you know, assistance, I, my, my battle cry to every contractor I could talk to, I said, you need to do two things. The first thing is get your money. Get, if the government's going to give you money, then get it and take it. Even if you don't need it, get it, right? And the second thing you need to do is get online, right? Just get online, get your business. Hey, listen, I, you need 
there's elements to doing a, a, a successful virtual presentation. You need to screen share. You need presentation. Uh, you need a, a very simple way of doing it. You know, one click ha happens to have all this stuff in one convenient spot. You know, it's one convenient platform that has every all the elements you need, all the components to do a successful uh, and really professional online presentation and virtual sales call. Um, use it if you want, but get online. However, you, I was talking to a guy um, last night and this morning um, up in Boston. He's he's virtual. He's using a, a different method. He's using Zoom and he's doing it that way. Um, but he's online and his business is is moving on forward. He is seeing clients. He's making sales. Um, there's a lot of right ways. The the mentality that I see that it frightens me uh, is people saying that, you know, once the all clear is sounded, we're going to go back to business as usual. And no, we're not. No, we're not. This is not a pause. This is a reboot. And you either get on the new bandwagon that's headed or uh, I'm telling you, you're going to, you're, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. The uh, the visibility and everything is so key right now. And just seeing how things are, are are changing for the good, it seems like. So it's it's great to hear um, you talk about that. And that that's really everything I had, Mike. I, I really do appreciate you coming on and and um, giving us some time and some of your insights on what you've seen. Uh, no, no problem. Uh, you know, thank you know if if it's able to help. Listen, this industry has done. Um, wonders for myself uh i've been able to you know provide for a family and provide for myself and for me to you know try to help other people out there um you know i'm happy to do it uh you know, feel free to always you know call me or you know if, if anyone wants a reference i talk to contractors on a regular basis and i'm happy to help them out very cool. Very cool. Well, thanks so much, Mike, and um, definitely hope to have you on again soon. Okay. 